Okay, this lesson for the Corne Project class will address lexical, confessional, and constructed. Uh, when it comes to our words in the Corne Project class, we uh, return to the uh, languages as those which were the original uh, expressions of that which was inspired uh, as those men were moved and God superintended that. So we go to the lexical, and in the seminary, it's quite disciplined and structured to adhere to that which can be lexically supported. So when you do lexical syntactical analysis, which you all are now able to do and are, have begun quite some time ago, but when we hear us, ourselves use words like omnipotence, for example, uh, you can type this in on any website, and and then omniscience, the the writer or the person on the blog or the website will say, Omni is a Latin word for all, and it means science is knowledge, and God has all knowledge. And then immediately, though, they'll go to things like Psalm 147, uh, 5, for example, infinite understanding. Infinite is a good word. So uh, well, here we go. Here we go. There it is. Yeah, Psalm 147, 5 of God's knowledge. So we'll look at Psalm 147.5 for just a moment. And notice, now there's fewer, let's say there's few here. Let's just put that few, few working with a lexicon, which is a, a word for a dictionary of a dead language, like the dictionary I have for the King James Bible. It's of those old English words so that when I uh, read the English Bible that was in Old English hundreds of years ago, I can look at the meanings from a dictionary of that language at that time. So you can get that anywhere you like. And it's, you're practicing lexography. Now, a few people do that, and that's fine. It, it, our interest isn't uh, diminished. Uh, there's more people that will define or describe things by this. For example, when I would ask about depravity, it, the term, it appeared people were more adamantly affirming it than able to define it, and what was confusing for them, not for me, but for them, and they would even say they don't understand the question, is was they couldn't distinguish the request as a lexical definition that I was trained and disciplined in, disciplined by design and strengthened through structure. That's what the seminary does. And then most people, we have our own constructed uh, terms and our own meanings, and we have assumed many implications that may not be incorrect. It just, they may not be tied to, let's say, a, a confession uh, that's established and agreed upon by churches, or it's certainly not something that we'd find in a lexicon. And then without the lexical definition, we would not go to Psalm 147.5, for example, where it says his understanding is infinite. Let's just go to Psalm 147, 5. And, but let's notice that term. It's Pavun. Pavun. And we remember this term because it's familiar because we did a study in Jeremiah 10, 12, where it says he stretched forth the heavens by his discretion. It's the English term in this text, discretion, it's in this text, understanding, and notice it's the same word. Pavun. And what's really intriguing is we had observed in the paleo, that pictographic, and we'll look at numbers soon. There's a Dr. Rhodes is out there working diligently, has already gathered a lot of numerics. We'll bring those in. But this is a cross cross and sun and nail and life. And you remember this letter noon has a symbol fish and I misspelled recently but it's uh, ichthys, Jesus Christ uh, God son. I'd put the lowercase ichthys Savior, there, ichthys, that's where that, that derives. So we notice that 
when we talk about God's understanding being infinite, we talk about his power to stretch forth, his discretion to stretch forth the heavens. We notice it's centered on this, which could not be more uh, highly appraised or opined. So that's quite a fascinating thing that we can learn when we do bother and have the interest to look at words. But it help you under, help you uh, help others understand what you're uh, speaking and from where you're leading out. You're positing out from a text according to a definition in the dictionary of that language which is no longer spoken, Biblical Hebrew. And the Old English, for example, of the King James Bible, people don't speak that, but we have dictionaries of those words. So as we moved on, we also learned, as those interested and fascinated by all this, that this letter was life and the symbol fish and ichthys is how they would communicate in that Jesus Christ, God's Son, Savior. Well, then we went to Genesis 1.1 and we found that term um, bere sheath. Sheath. I'm writing this in block form. Be a sheath. Make sure I close that. And we notice this was uh, Son of God, violence, hand of violence, crucified. So we have the uh, Son. This is also house, house, and this is Prince, head, the Prince of that house. God, this is uh, like teeth and gnashing, violence, hand, and then this is the cross. So we have the uh, Son of God, hand of violence, crucified. So again, that message is quite clear. Well, then we notice that the verb itself, bara. Here, even the term create, the verb create, and that's just a cal uh, perfect third masculine singular. Those of you that are working on this. So this is, so God's son, son of God, I'll just write that. So son, prince, head of God. So even the, the, the act create, and Jesus is the one that the Bible says through whom and apart from whom nothing came to be that came to be. So we're noticing that by bothering to go back, for example, if we used a dictionary of the dead language, biblical Hebrew, we would find fascinating things. If we use a dictionary, for example, of the old English, those of you that studied some of the history of the King James Bible, you notice they went back to older English than even the time period in which they were emending it, that is the King James translators, so that you would be fascinated to learn how uh, high and uh, rich they wanted that language to be so that it wouldn't sound like anything else. They wanted it very unique, and that's admirable uh, to say the least. Now, as far as creation, since we have that here and we have this infinite understanding, we also have Isaiah... 48.3. Now these are things we could miss if we weren't carefully looking for it. Written out first. There we go. There we go. So this is pithom. It means instantly. And it says he spoke and things came forth from his mouth instantly. And this word here, uh, strikingly enough, even refers to mouth. Also refers to open. That's a Bible word. And then we have cross. We have God. We have God. Also, this uh, refers to eternal life. So there is an open cross. There is no sin barrier. Christ is the great sin bearer 
So he took away the sin. So there's there is an open cross. If you ever want to talk about in a controversy called open versus closed theism, this would be a good thing to focus on. There's nothing between fallen man and the cross. And the cross is God's answer to the great gulf and alienation of man from him because of sin. And then, of course, this is uh, waters. Uh, as Jesus described himself, uh, those who receive from him eternal life, it's God's cross, cross of God, waters, living waters. So this is all very good as far as uh, pictographically. It's also fascinating just how much we can see how well we're scripted so that we wouldn't codepend upon construct. That's why before you debate people that are uh, limited to their, their very uh, abridged understanding, of, let's say a construct Calvin or um, a construct Lutheran or Arminian after Arminus or Molina or Pelagius, a lot of people haven't really done a, an in-depth evaluation of even those. So before you begin to banter, I just invite people, as we do in this class, if you want to know and, and go and learn the Bible and, and want to know what it says and why more knowledge of the Bible uh, definitions of the words, of the languages that are no longer used, like Biblical Hebrew, Koine Greek, and Old English of the English Bible, you can look all that up. And you can have knowledge of the Bible, which is really my interest is what's the Bible say? I, I don't want to diminish people, but compared to the Bible, uh, a John Calvin's reasoning is clumsy compared to God's infinite understanding. And uh, the same with a Marty Luther, even saying Marty, people would take offense. But that's because we get really emotionally attached to that according to which we've been primed. And religion, according to Jonathan Edwards, is very emotional. It's like politics. You can say Republican or Democrat, but none of us really become curious when someone announces their identity where they might have acquired their degree in political science because we all admit, and I do endless surveys when I meet people, I ask them immediately, I said, well, hey, uh, religious and political identities, you don't suspect someone has studied political science who just happens to identify themselves Republican or Democrat. Well, of course not. I said, well, then you probably don't think and are become curious when someone says I'm Catholic, Protestant, Judaic, Islamic, occultic, New Age, denominational one, two, three, or Calvin, Arminian, Luther, Lutheran, Molinist, Pelagian, that they probably attended the seminary or are very studious in scriptures, no lexography, any, no, no one thinks that way. So, just enjoy the freedom you have and don't get caught up in those uh, dead-end uh, recursive loops. But these are good things you can learn, and it'll help you to notice when you distinguish that you're speaking from a lexical view. And, again, it gets difficult even when you move out to a confessional because you have to then go to that and really read that and try to understand what they meant. And then you get out here the most where most of us are is constructed. So this is the primary source material for priming, this is. We have our own meanings, our own language. It's almost to the level of jargon. It can become according to that which is colloquially expressed or according to the vernacular. I don't even know the fancy words for all that. But over here, it gets a little more formal. It has some structure. So when you get out here, it gets really odd. So enjoy this lesson and uh, continue to find it worthwhile. Uh, you may have to uh, bother to research and investigate, but it's worth it because of what we learned. So have a blessed day. Enjoy this lesson.